takeover. God will save you. God will bless you. But you must take advantage when he knocks at your door. But according to this scripture here, Lazarus died. And when Lazarus died, there was no large funeral. He did not have any earthly possessions. But thank God, he had a heavenly possession. possession. But the Bible says angels came down and carried him to Abraham's bosom. Couldn't afford a crumb, but was provided angelic escort. Why don't you say amen? amen. I said angelic escorts. Amen. Some glad morning. When this life is over, we're going to have angelic escorts. Amen. Ain't that wonderful? He said he died, and in verse 22, they carried him to Abraham's bosom. But in that same verse, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight words, and the rich man died and was buried. Amen. No angelic escorts. Ain't no angels gonna escort you to hell. You just going there. Amen. The only hell a Christian will ever have is here on earth. The minute death strikes our body, an angelic escort will carry us from earth to glory. Bless him, bless him. But this rich man died. Now it's not in here, so don't look for it. But let me use my sanctified imagination. This rich man died. And they had a great big church funeral at one of these dead churches. Amen. And the Rotarians talked about his great work. And the knights talked about his great work. And the councilman talked about his civic responsibility. And the mayor declared it a day in Divey's honor. And all of the bigwigs with their limousines were out there and escorted him to the grave, but there were no angels to escort him to glory. Without Christ, you can get escorted to the graveyard, but not to heaven. Oh, bless his name. Then the next time we heard from him, he said, in hell. Amen. Fine linen in hell. Wearing fine linen and purple every day in hell. In hell. Eating sumptuously every day, but in hell. My brothers and sisters, I'd rather suffer with the people of God for a season than to enjoy sin for just a little while in hell. Now, first of all, this proves that hell is a place. Folks going around talking about it's just a state of mind. You catch all of it down here. No, you're going to catch more than that. You are going to a place. Hell is a place. It's a place where there's no love of God. It's a place where there's no mercy of God. It's a place where there's no grace of God. It's a place where there is always misery forever and ever and ever and ever. Hell is a place. Then he said, I lifted up mine eyes. You can see in hell. And he said, 
I was in torment. You can feel in hell. Amen. And see if Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom, you can remember in hell. He looked and he said, he said, look young, look young. There is that fellow that laid at my gate, full of souls. That poor fellow. And all of a sudden he got a lapse of understanding. He said, Abraham, send that poor fellow, that underprivileged person that laid at my gate, have him bring me some water. Abraham said, he ain't no servant no more. <laughs> he fetched water on earth. He picked cotton on earth. He sawed wood on earth. But he's in glory. And you are in hell. And your money don't count up here. Your power don't count up here. You are not Lord up here. Jesus is Lord. Thank God. Thank God. I said thank God. Some of y'all ain't no never fast sumptuously, but get saved. Some of y'all ain't no never have no fine linen and purple, but get saved. Some of y'all ain't no never have the crumbs from the rich folks table, but get saved. I said get saved. And when the angels come, oh glory, when the angels come to carry you home, my old parents used to sing, swing low, sweet chariot, coming for the carry me home. I looked over yonder and what did I see? A band of angels <laughs> coming after me. Now remember now, on earth he was full of souls, souls all over his finger. But what he got in hell, he said, let him dip that soul finger in water and come and put that soul finger on my tongue. And somebody said, now what would one drop of water from a soul finger, first of all, the finger ain't so no more. <laughs> Death took that away. He's got a glorious finger now. And he said, now what good would one drop of water, one drop of God's water can cool all scorching hell? Just one drop, not a bucket, not a river. God is so powerful that one drop, hey, one drop of his grace can save Indianapolis. One drop of his mercy. Not a whole lot. Just one drop. Just one look. Just one look. Abraham said, I'm sorry, but you, that can't happen. It can't happen. You had your chance. And I may be preaching to somebody tonight, this is your chance. I might be preaching to somebody in Portland, Oregon, where I just left, or in Los Angeles, or in Mississippi. This is your chance because at your door may not be a Lazarus, 
It may not be a daddy. It may not be a homeless. At your door might be salvation. And you've passed by it every morning, every night, every morning, every night, and salvation is at your gate. Your mom is praying for you. The church is praying for you. Paul is praying for you. Jan is praying for you. P T PTL is praying for you. TBN is praying for you. Billy is praying for you. And you're just walking by it every night, every day. Some of you are even boasting about the fact, I went to that revival and he didn't touch me. It's laying at your gate. And it will be the yardstick the criteria by which God will judge you. God will say, weren't you down there in that auditorium in Indianapolis when Paul and Jan was there? Uh-huh. And then they tell you come to Jesus? Uh-huh. And you didn't come? Uh-huh. Strike. <laughs> weren't you at the Southwood Alligator Baptist Church and they were having revival and the evangelist said, come to Jesus? and you didn't come, uh-huh, strike two. Weren't you at the Billy Graham crusade way up in the second balcony and Billy said, come on down and give your life to Christ and you came down and went to the parking lot, uh-huh, strike three. And just strike four, strike five, strike six, strike seven. Many of you have let salvation on the radio, on television, in the newspaper, on the street corners, lay at your gate. And from hell, hallelujah. I said from hell. I mean by that when you get to hell. From hell, revivals are gonna look good. From hell, Sunday school is going to look like you ought to been there. From hell, prayer meeting will be crowded out. From hell, everything that you should have done will be what you ought to do, but you can't do because you can't get out of hell. Because he said there is a big gulf, and those over here can't get over there, and those over there can come over here, but since you decided to go to hell, you are in hell, you can't come up here, and I ain't gonna let Lazarus go down there. So you in hell. How long? Forever. He said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, Abraham, since I have you on the line, could you let somebody go to my house? Look at this arrogant, presumptuous person in hell giving orders. Would you go to my house and tell my five brothers who were in line with me, and the only reason why they ain't here, I died first, because we were all in the hell-bound line. Tell my brothers, don't come here. Don't come here. And said, no. They have Moses and they have the prophets. He said, I know they have those. I heard them myself and I didn't pay no attention to none of them. And they won't then if they don't hear Moses and if they don't hear the prophets, they will go to hell also. He said, but oh, Abraham, if somebody would just come up from the dead like Lazarus and go to them, they will be convinced, no, no they won't. Here we are 2,000 years later. He died on Friday. He was buried. He died, he was dead, he was buried. He rose and yet half of Indianapolis still don't believe the report. They won't, even if the dead rise. What's at your gate tonight? 
Number one, it's the opportunity to be saved. Number two, it's the opportunity to save somebody. Number three, it's an opportunity to support God's program. It's an opportunity to live a Christian life. All of these are at your gates and they are opportunities. That's what they are, they are opportunities. And if you take advantage of them, you can be saved. If you take advantage of them, God will bless you. Look, Lazarus moves from sores and hungry to a citizen of glory. Ain't that good news? And God saved me. And I was reared in a log cabin and here I am in Indianapolis. God can bless you and God will bless you and God will bless you over and over. I know he will. I said, I know he will. Because what I have, he gave me. What I know, he taught me. Where I am, he brought me. And who I am, he made me. Because when he knocked at my heart, I said, yes, Lord, come into my heart. God will take over. God will save you. God will bless you. But you must take advantage when he knocks at your door.